Hello, my name is Jeff Reese, and I'm a clinical assistant professor at the University of Iowa College of Pharmacy. In addition to my teaching responsibilities, I have clinical responsibilities in the Geriatric Assessment Clinic at the University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, and I work with a team of nurse practitioners and a physician in an innovative home care practice. I'm going to talk about the use and monitoring of antipsychotic medications to treat behavioral symptoms in people with dementia. This group of medications has limited effectiveness and some pretty severe side effects, so we want to make sure we are monitoring for both. We monitor for effectiveness, so if the medications are not working, we can stop them, and for side effects, so we can balance the effectiveness with the side effects and make sure the medications aren't doing more harm than good. In this section, we will discuss the reasons antipsychotics might be used and some things they shouldn't be used for. Then I'll discuss proper management and monitoring of patients receiving antipsychotics for the behavioral problems of dementia. Even though the antipsychotics are not officially approved for the management of dementia, they are widely used and their appropriate treatment targets are recognized. The psychotic features that can accompany dementia, hallucinations, or delusions may respond to these agents. Delusions are false beliefs that aren't based in reality. Hallucinations are sensing things that aren't there like seeing things that aren't there or hearing voices. The presence of these symptoms alone should not be sufficient for the use of antipsychotics. In order to justify the use of antipsychotics in these patients, the symptoms need to be troublesome to the patient, causing him or her distress. Other treatment targets may be recognized as appropriate for the use of these agents and include aggressive behavior that may pose a danger to the patient or others. Other treatment targets are less well-defined and the use of antipsychotics is directed at relieving distress of the patient or reducing threats to others. They should be used only when the patient is experiencing inconsolable or persistent distress, has experienced a significant decline in their ability to function, or if their behavior creates a substantial barrier to their receiving appropriate care. These are rather high standards that act to protect the patient from ineffective or unnecessary use of antipsychotics. Remember that we want to only use these agents when we absolutely have to, due to their limited effectiveness in this population and the fact that there are significant side effects, including increased mortality in patients with dementia treated with antipsychotics. There is no evidence that antipsychotic medications are useful for any of these behaviors, and their use for these behaviors is inappropriate. As you review the list, you can see that some of these are quite common and can complicate the care of the patient. However, they do not respond to antipsychotics, and they should not be used. If any of these behaviors pose a problem, they should be addressed with non-drug means where appropriate, monitored closely, and documented accurately. The Antipsychotic Guide for Care Providers lists these appropriate and inappropriate treatment targets according to CMS guidelines. As mentioned in the introduction to this section, our approach to a patient recently started on an antipsychotic medication must include monitoring for effectiveness and side effects. It is crucial to clearly document those symptoms and behaviors which may justify the cautious use of antipsychotic drugs in patients with dementia. These symptoms and behaviors represent our treatment targets and must continually be monitored to determine whether or not the drug is helping to reduce or eliminate them. Keep in mind, for a patient with dementia, the behaviors may change over time with or without drug treatment. When an antipsychotic is initiated, it is unreasonable to expect an immediate reduction in target behaviors. If an immediate effect is seen, the adverse effect of sedation or sleepiness may be responsible. This should not be confused with effectiveness. Remember, for true effectiveness of an antipsychotic to be evaluated, be patient and continually monitor the identified target behaviors. Don't be in a hurry to see a response and ask for an increased dose too quickly as it may take several days to a week or more to see the full effect of the medication. A realistic goal for therapy is not, in fact, elimination of symptoms. The decision must be made on an ongoing basis whether the amount of benefit received justifies the real or potential side effects. Accurate quantitative and qualitative descriptions of our targets 
will allow us to make those assessments. This should be documented on a daily or shift basis depending upon the setting and there are a variety of commercially available forms to do this. Whether you use a commercially prepared form or other methods such as in the nurse's notes, it is critical that objective and specific target behaviors are consistently evaluated. That is, the listed target behavior should be clear and unambiguous to anyone who may be monitoring the patient or reviewing the form. Examples of specific target behaviors include hitting, biting, striking out, or refusal to eat. Examples of nonspecific target behaviors to avoid using would be agitation or restlessness. You can see how the term agitation could mean quite a range of behaviors. Therefore, it would not be considered a valid target behavior. The same can be said for monitoring adverse effects. This can be accomplished using the same or similar documentation forms and procedures as that of monitoring for effectiveness. Again, we must be specific with our description of the side effect as well as document whatever action was taken to address the side effect. Serious side effects should receive immediate action, which may include holding or discontinuing of the medication or reduction of dose. Tell a nurse or doctor if you think a patient might be experiencing a side effect. Here is a list of most common and most serious side effects associated with the use of antipsychotic medications. These are sedation or sleepiness, which can cause other problems, postural hypotension, which means a drop in blood pressure on standing. This can cause dizziness. Falls caused by postural hypotension, sedation, and movement side effects. The risk of falls is about twice as high when a patient gets an antipsychotic. Extrapyramidal symptoms include tremor, tight muscles, changes in walking, such as short shuffling steps, and other signs that look like Parkinson's disease. These also include akathisia, which is a feeling of internal restlessness. This can be seen as pacing, difficulty standing still, among other things. Tardive dyskinesia is a side effect that may appear after a person takes an antipsychotic for a while. This can be seen as twitching of the muscles in the face or trunk or other unusual movements. Antipsychotics can also cause weight gain and high blood sugar. So it's important to watch for increased appetite and weight, as well as signs of high blood sugar, such as confusion, thirst, and frequent urination. Even without high blood sugar, antipsychotics can cause urinary side effects like increased incontinence or urinary tract infections. Finally, antipsychotics appear to cause a small increase in the risk of strokes and death. It's important to watch for signs of stroke, such as slurred speech and paralysis. But mainly, these are some of the reasons that it's best to reserve antipsychotic use for severe cases and only keep using them if there's a clear need and benefit. This table provides specific guidance on monitoring adverse effects. Basically, for any potential adverse drug effect, we should closely observe the patient on a continual basis. The signs and symptoms listed on the pocket card shown here can clue you in to a possible side effect and methods for testing and monitoring are suggested. Please have a look at this pocket card on our website. When a monitoring plan is developed, it may be based on the specific side effects that are most likely with that particular drug. This approach will improve patient safety, positively impact the care of the patient, and help meet CMS antipsychotic medication use guidelines for patients in continuing care facilities. If you want to know more about side effect risk with different drugs, see the antipsychotic prescribing pocket card. When adverse effects are complicating the use of an antipsychotic, these are some of our options. The first consideration should be to look at the effectiveness of the treatment. If the treatment has been largely ineffective at controlling target behaviors, then a case could be made to discontinue the antipsychotic and not restart another. Even if the patient seems to be responding to the medication, a trial off the drug can help determine whether the drug was actually the cause of the improvement and eliminate most adverse effects. Dosage reduction is another straightforward and simple approach to the problem of adverse effects. Adverse effects are almost always dose-related and may very well be managed by using smaller doses. Even in patients who are responding to the drug and not experiencing unwelcome effects, 
it is useful to reduce the dose to determine if the drug is still necessary and manage the patient on the lowest possible dose that works. Another approach to managing adverse effects is to change drugs. The side effect profiles of the various antipsychotics can be different, and these differences can be used if a decision is made to change medications. In nursing facilities, CMS guidelines require that periodic dose reductions are tried or that a clear reason is documented for not trying to lower the dose. While the standard in this situation is often six months, an attempt prior to six months would always be reasonable and within the guidelines of good clinical practice. Remember, unless there is clear evidence of the effectiveness of the drug, it should be discontinued as the potential risk of these drugs often outweigh potential benefits. If effectiveness is questionable, a decision to discontinue the antipsychotic is perfectly reasonable. Many patients do not experience exacerbation of agitation or psychosis when the medication is withdrawn, and this can be managed with non-drug approaches. It is important to remember to continue monitoring for target behaviors during the period of dose reduction or discontinuation this monitoring will be helpful in determining if a resumption of the antipsychotic is needed. I want to thank you for participating in our educational program on management of problem behaviors and psychosis in dementia. Our team hopes that our information and clinical tools can help you provide the best possible care for people with dementia. Please browse the website for more resources and information and let us know what you thought. Take care.